Hi, my name is Dr. Nidhi Gupta and I'm one of the neonatal follow-up consultants at Sir Gangaram Hospital, New Delhi, India. Our project title was Noisy in ICU, Impact of Staff Sensitization on Noise Levels. Just a quick disclosure, the authors have no conflicts of interest to declare the study was not funded by any external agency. Starting with the background as to why we carried out this study, neonates are continuously exposed to high levels of noise in an ICU, which adversely affects them as well as the caregivers. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends noise levels not more than 45 decibel in intensive care setting. Educating staff has been identified as a key element in creating a noise-free environment. The objectives of our study were, one, to determine the noise levels in our busy tertiary care and ICU, which is one of the busiest in Northern India. And second, to assess the change in noise levels after implementation of a structured educational program. Our study was improved by the Institutional Ethics Committee prior to carrying it out. In terms of methodology, ours was a pre and post intervention study design. During the pre intervention period or period one, noise levels were continuously recorded in different areas of NICU sequentially over a period of 15 days. We purchased a sound meter from Denmark, which was a class 2 sound meter, and was calibrated on purchase to ensure the accuracy and validity of results. The sound meter recorded noise levels in decibel in different formats as depicted in the poster. During training phase, a structured program in line with literature was carried out for educating staff about harmful effects of noise and how to reduce them. Quiet hour was also introduced for two hours in the day when minimal handling was ensured and lights were dimmed. Apart from this, we introduced collar badges bearing the logo, I'm for no noise, for reinforcing self-regulation of behavior. No noise levels were recorded during the intervention period to avoid bias. After completion of training phase or the intervention phase, sound levels were again recorded in period two or the post-intervention period. Noise levels in the pre and the post-intervention periods were compared using appropriate statistical test. Coming to the results, an average of 20,000 measurements during period 1 and period 2 each were recorded and compared. As we can see in figure 1, during period 1, the recordings in blue were an average higher compared to the period 2 or the post-intervention phase when they were on an average, two decibels lower. Here, the x-axis represents the various time periods distributed across a 24-hour clock, whilst the y-axis represents the noise levels in decibels. We can see that the maximum reduction of noise levels happens during the quiet hour. Overall, there was a reduction of two decibels, which equates to approximately 13% reduction in noise levels as decibel is a logarithmic unit and during the quieta there was a 5 decibel or on an average 30% reduction. We concluded that noise levels in an ICU are above permissible limits most of the time but that sensitization and a formal structured training of the staff can lead to a significant reduction in noise levels but sustainability is also important. These are the collar badges we introduced bearing the logo I'm for no noise. And this is the sound meter we purchased from Denmark for our study. As we can see in this clip, in the pre-intervention phase, this was visually obscured to represent a digital clock. And in the post-intervention phase, it had flashing lights, green, red, and amber, representing different levels of noise. And I wish to acknowledge our team, the Department of Neonatology at Sir Ganga Ram Hospital, New Delhi, and also our nursing team, medical team and parents for their constant cooperation and support in helping us reduce noise levels. Thank you.